Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote, Look not mournfully into the past, it comes not back again. In this segment of August Outdoors, we decided to take a trip down the road and into the past, to a place where life is locked into a period in time and the movement of the clock has ceased to function. Just across the Savannah River, inside South Carolina, and the Savannah Riverside, lie the remains of a number of towns. The largest was Ellington, followed by Dumbarton, Myers Mill, and a slew of others. In their heyday, these were farming communities. The residents displaced to make way for a huge government project, a hydrogen bomb plant. Today, the land is off limits to everyone except site employees and government officials. But on rare occasions, past residents are able to take a controlled tour of the place they call home. On these rare occasions, like having a homing beacon, they find their family's plot of land and even the location of their home, now gone and completely covered in forest. As the wind blows through the pine branches above us, if you listen carefully, you can hear the laughter of children's voices. Further south, on the Ogeechee River, is the town of Scarborough. Originally created as a train depot for the Central Railroad, today there is little evidence of the once thriving farm community. Over the years, Scarborough went through feast and famine, but the town was in a great location, nestled between the railroad and the Ogeechee River. On December 3, 1864, while on his march to the sea, General William T. Sherman and his troops camped along the railroad tracks at the base of this town. Legend has it that Sherman burned and looted much of the town, leaving little in his wake. Despite the Civil War, the town thrived in its aftermath. What led to its demise? Possibly competition by the neighboring communities of Rocky Ford and Millen. We'll never really know. But if you stand on the old Main Street, looking down toward the Ogeechee River, you can imagine how it was in the recent past. The general store was owned by Mr. Hazel Frawley, and he and his old dog Buster waited on customers, selling everything from coffee to coffins. On Sunday, the Baptist church was filled with the faithful, and old hymns could be heard echoing down the Ogeechee River. About 30 minutes west of Augusta, in McDuffie County, are the remains of Wrightsboro. Created by Quakers back in the mid-1700s, they found the land rich and fertile for growing all sorts of crops. The Quakers were a peaceful people and because of their religious beliefs, remained neutral during the Revolutionary War. Their refusal to bear arms against the British made American revolutionaries bitter and resulted in numerous killings, burning of homes, and confiscation of valuables. Disillusioned with the whole situation, most of the Quakers had left Wrightsboro by 1805. But other residents inhabited the town, and by the mid-1800s, Wrightsboro became a thriving agricultural community. Cotton was the main cash crop, but when forced labor and slavery were abolished after the Civil War, the town all but vanished. The death blow came in the early 20th century with the arrival of the destructive boll weevil and an end to cotton as a major commodity. By the 1930s, the town was all but empty, Today, many of the old buildings have been restored, and markers exist throughout the area to remind visitors of the town that once was. There are many other ghost towns, too many to talk about in this segment. But rest assured, a short drive in any direction will take you to them. And when you arrive, take care. Someone lived there and loved that town as their own.